Well, I'm very excited about the publication of our new book, um, which comes out of a long collaboration, really, with um, my friends and colleagues, Carol Ann Hooper, who's at the University of York, and Val Gillies, who's at London South Bank University. Uh, the title of the book is Family Troubles with a Question Mark, and the question mark is very important. Um, the subtitle is Exploring Changes and Challenges in the Family Lives of Children and Young People, and we have contributors from around the world. People came together and uh, really engaged in what we're trying to do. Uh, with me now, I have two colleagues who've contributed who are from the Open University with me. Uh, we have Uma Errol, who's from the Department of Sociology, and Bridge Featherstone, who's from the Department of Social Work. Um, but the book itself really came from a colloquium that we organised in July 2010, uh, and people came from all over the world and engaged in what we were trying to do. Um, and I might explain it a little bit by contrast in some ways with uh, government policy, which since uh, the colloquium has particularly identified a policy around troubled families. Um, and what that policy does is to draw some really clear categories and boundaries about who are considered to be troubled families. And that can be useful. Clear-cut boundaries can be really useful and have a purpose. But our purpose was very different. It was to open up categories, to ask questions about things that we don't normally bring together. And why do we draw the boundaries where we do? Um, and to try and cross some of those boundaries. So crossing boundaries between mainstream family research and people who are orientated to problems, between researchers and practitioners, and between people working on all sorts of different issues to try and see what we had in common and what happens when you actually try and open those boundaries up. And in the process, we raise this issue of whether troubles are usefully seen as a normal part of family life rather than something itself very categorical. And how do our expectations of childhood feed into that? Um, in many ways, we want to have very high expectations of childhood, very good lives for our children. But if we raise the expectations too high, does that in itself cause a problem? And it becomes unrealistic. But at the same time, opening these questions up is not comfortable. Um, it raises all sorts of uncertainties and ambiguities and complexities that are not easy to live with and are not easy to resolve. And at the same time, one also wants at times to be able to say, this is unacceptable, this is a form of trouble that we're not prepared to accept or to regard as normal. And so it, there, it raises lots of tensions, it raises lots of difficult, sensitive issues. And those are apparent in the book, and we've, we've tried to make those visible rather than closing them down. So it, 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 the book is about how we look at those boundaries and what's normal, what isn't normal, and is it helpful to see troubles as a normal part of families. Mm. And I think Uma, you've picked up on that in your chapter in a particular way. Yes, that's right. Maybe one thing that we should also say is um, you know, when we're talking about crossing boundaries, who is the book actually for? And I think, of course, it's for, for family studies people, both students, academics, practitioners, as you mentioned. But we're also crossing boundaries in terms of subject area. This book is also for people who come maybe from other subject areas, from, other, from, from a variety of disciplines, um, but might have an interest in issues of family studies. So it's really an interdisciplinary mm -hmm. book, right? And this is where my chapter fits in partly, because I'm looking at um, migrant families, migrant parents and children, and their intergenerational communication, how they um, manage to, to, to build a shared identity alongside um, cultural differences also. And in that sense, um, the chapter is crossing boundaries, if you will, from migration studies and, and family studies. Migrant families are often seen as troubled in both these um, fields of study, let's say. Um, especially when, when parents and children have perhaps different cultural resources, different language resources. Um, that doesn't quite fit in with the expectation that parents should know more than children. Right? So it's kind of troubling for family studies in one way, but it's also troubling for uh, migration studies, where uh, often it is the parents who are seen as an obstacle to children's integration. 
Now this chapter really takes a very different um, approach and shows how a much more complex and nuanced picture can emerge if we acknowledge really the creative ways in which children and parents also can negotiate both differences, but alongside these differences also build a shared identity. Mm. And I believe these are issues that are very central to, to policy, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Well, my chapter is actually about working with fathers and it builds upon my own practice experience you know, in social work, but also my research experience of evaluating and looking at policy and practice with fathers over the last few decades. And I think one of the things that struck me uh, was the kind of split thinking we have about uh, fathers. That, for example, in the 1980s, we would think of, uh, we, didn't, we often didn't talk about fathers explicitly at all, or we talked particularly about non-resident fathers as problems, as risks. Uh, economic risks, but also as risks for boys, risks that, they, that boys in particular wouldn't turn out well if they didn't have a father resident. Under the last government, we moved a lot more actually to thinking about fathers as resources for children. And uh, there was a lot of effort put into developing projects that I evaluated, which helped, fa which helped fathers to engage with their children, particularly around educational issues. And there was a particular feeling that fathers would be resources for children who are particularly economically marginalized. Um, but there were some gaps in that thinking. It was a way forward on one level, but there were huge gaps. One is there's been a tendency in the policy arena to either talk about parents in a gender neutral way or to talk about fathers in a way that doesn't acknowledge that they have ongoing relationships with mothers, whether they're good or they're bad. And so uh, I think there was a split thinking in that sense that fathers and children were constructed in bit separately as dyads. And in fact, we always have to think about fathers' relationships with mothers, particularly in an area which has proved very troubling, which is around domestic violence. And uh, so that's the other thing I, I, I look at in the chapter. I'm looking at fathers as they're portrayed as resources, but also looking at how men are portrayed as risks and how we need to bring those two sets of debates together. And I end the chapter by looking at uh, interventions around fathers who are men, who are domestically violent, where the split thinking is tried to be transcended and where people have tried to think more holistically about fathers as men and fathers with very positive identities with children, but also fathers who are perhaps engaging in problematic behaviour. So it's quite a, a, a chapter that looks at policy, but also looks very much at practice. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think that gives a fantastic flavour of the sorts of um, really interesting and difficult issues that the book raises. Um, it's quite a significant, substantial book, but it's organised into various sections. So it starts off by talking about contexts and methodologies to sort of set the scene. Uh, the second section talks about who's trouble, contested definitions. Um, we then move on to the really difficult issues of what's normal, what's troubling and what's harmful. Then we turn to looking at troubles and tan transitions across space and culture and then come back to the issues of working with families. And we hope very much it will provide a lot of food for thought, open up conversations that other people will take forward.